Today we're looking at logarithms and their graphs. Well, not so much their graphs today. We'll be graphing on the next lesson, but we are starting off by looking at this graph here so that we can remember what an exponential function is because we're talking about what is the inverse of an exponential. That would be the logarithm. So first we're asking the question, is there even an inverse to be found? So you might remember when we were talking about functions, we gave a vertical line test to see if there was exactly one input for every output. And if my vertical line crosses that graph in exactly one spot, then yes, it is a function. We gave it the horizontal line test to ask ourselves, does it have an inverse? If my horizontal line touches the graph in exactly one location, then yes, there is an inverse. That means we can find the inverse. We can work with the inverse. And the inverse of that exponential is the logarithm. So that means if my exponential form has a base, then my logarithm must have a base. If my exponential has an exponent, then my logarithm will also have an exponent in it as well. So that's what we're saying in this introductory paragraph. We do have an inverse because it passes the horizontal line test, and therefore we have an inverse function called the logarithmic function with a base of a. So whatever the base is of the exponential, we also have the same matching base here as well. So here's the formal definition. If you take a look at these two, it's the same form, but uh, let me reword that. It's not the same form. Here you have your exponential, and here you have the logarithmic. But notice you have the same pieces. In each case, you have the base, right? So there's your base of A showing up in both forms. And look at your exponent. They're using here the letter Y for the exponent, so that is found right here. Yes, yeah, so we do have an exponent. That is, it's, it's not a superscript in the logarithmic form, but we do have a way to look for and find and calculate the exponent that existed in the exponential form. So we would read this as log base a of x. All right. So when we have a few of these bases, we have a special form for writing them. If you have a base of 10, we call that a common base. We don't even bother writing the 10. You, you see that 10 right there? We don't even write that. We, we show it this way. So just making that note right here, we show it this way. We just say log of x, and that means it's the common base of 10, log base 10 of x. Same if you have the natural base of e. We call that the natural logarithm. You see that base of e. We don't even write that at all. We replace the log with the base of e using ln. That's the natural logarithm. So again, this is the way that we write it. So when you've looked at your calculator, you've probably seen that there are a couple different logarithmic buttons. You'll see the log. That means you're using the common base of 10. And you see the ln. That means you're using the natural base of e. We're not using the calculator today, but that's why you have two different buttons on your calculator. So here it is. We're saying again that these two are looking like different forms, but they really are equivalent. And if they're equivalent, they are equal in value. And that means we can convert from one form to the other. So that's what we'll be starting off with. We'll be converting back and forth. Then we'll be looking at properties and using those properties to help us simplify. So let me turn over to the next page. So here at the top, uh, the, the top two rows we're looking at converting. Here we're starting off with logarithm, so we'll be converting that to exponential. And in the second row we've got our exponentials, we'll be converting that into a logarithm. So before I jump into this, I want you to think about how we normally read these. I'm going to start down here with example five. We know we read from left to right. So I'm starting off with the base of three, and then because the exponent is a superscript, my i kind of goes up a little bit before coming back down. So think of this like a clockwise reading pattern. It goes up and comes back down again. So this is just a little bit of a gimmick. If I'm going to read this logarithm and try to turn it into an exponential, I'm going to read it in the opposite direction instead of clockwise. I'm going to start at the base of 2 and then read it in a counterclockwise direction like this in order to help me convert it into an exponential. So there's the base of 2, and then we're reading it from right to left. There's the 5, then the equal sign, then the 32. So there's the exponent of 5, then the equal sign, then the 32. 
So and that's just a gimmick. It's just a trick for helping keep track of the order of the numbers as we convert forms. Here's number two. My base is invisible, so that means it's the base of 10 because we have the LOG. So we can read that in a sort of a right to left direction. So there's the base of 10 to the exponent of negative two, there's the equal sign, and then we finish up with the fraction. Here's number three. So again, we don't have the base, but with the LN, that communicates it's the natural base of E. That's what I'm starting off with, and then I'm reading that sort of in this counterclockwise direction, this right to left. So E to the power of 0 0.693, and that equals two. Now in order for this little trick to work, I need to have my logarithm on the left hand side. Each of these examples were like that and I don't have that here, so I'm gonna take a moment and rewrite this as natural log of 12 equals x. Now I'll find my base of e and rewrite that as e to the power of x equals 12. All right, let's go the other way around now. Here's example five. So if three to the fourth power equals 81, then I want to match the base of three, so log base three, and then we fill it in backwards from right to left. So four, three to the fourth equals 81, so there's the four on the far right side. Working my way to the left, there's the equal sign. Working my way to the left again, there's the 81. So you're thinking of it as three to the power of four equals 81. Remember, this is your exponent. So whenever we have an exponent in a logarithm, it's not a superscript, it's on the main line of text. Speaking of which, when you are writing these on lined paper, it's pretty easy because you have the lines to guide you, but when you are writing it on blank or white paper like this, you want to keep track of where your line of text is happening so that the 81 should be on that line, the 4 should be on that line, the log should be on the line, but the base of 3 should be a subscript. That's definitely pushed down. Same with the exponential. You can see the two should be on the line, the 32 should be on the line, but the power five is obviously pushed up. That's a, sub, uh, a superscript, right? And the three here is pushed down to the subscript. So you have to be careful because I have seen students, and I'll scratch this out in a moment. I've seen students write the answer like this, log with that base of three as if it were on the same line, and then they kind of slant the writing uphill like this. Maybe they're writing uphill, maybe the paper is turned but it looks like the three is not a base. If you do that, then it looks like the base is a 10 and you have three to the power of 81. That's not correct, so don't write it that way. Okay, moving on. Here's my base of 10. Again, I always like my base on the left-hand side, so I'm flipping this equation around. Now we're ready. There's my base of 10 to the power of four equals that point zero, 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 one. So log base 10 means we don't even write the base of 10. So there's the invisible base of 10. We write the sequence backwards from right to left. So there's the exponent of negative four. To the left of that is the equal sign. To the left of that is the point zero, 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 one. All right, we'll finish off with number seven. Here is my base of E. So this is not my final answer. I'll change this in a moment, but normally we would start by saying, okay, here's the log, here's the base. Oops, we don't want to write it this way. If you have the natural base of E, you want to replace all of that with the LN, okay? So then X equals five, fill that in backwards, X on the far right equals on the left of that, and then five on the left of that. So natural log of five equals X. There's your exponent. So here are some properties uh, that we'll be using in the problems below to help us simplify without a calculator. So these are properties of, ex of exponents and what it looks like in logarithmic form. So we don't often talk about this one, but it is a property and does come up in these sections here. So notice you have an equation. The left side equals the right side because the equal sign tells us so. But notice the bases are the same. So if the bases are the same, and we need the equation to be the same, then that means what looks to be two different exponents are in fact not different. They are going to equal themselves. So we say if the bases are the same, then the exponents are the same. Or if the bases are equivalent, then the exponents are equivalent. So we can use that concept here with logarithms. Notice you have an equal sign. You have logs on both sides. If the bases are the same, then what can we say about the values of which we are taking the logarithm? They have to be the same as well. So the number on the left will equal the number on the right. They look different, but they'll be the same after all. Same if it's a natural log. Natural log of x equals natural log of y. The bases are the same. 
so the values of which we're taking the logarithms are the same. Here, you recognize this property. Any base to the power of zero must equal one, so convert that into logarithmic form, and it looks like this. Log base a of one equals zero, right? There's your exponent, right? We said that the exponent, while it's a superscript in your exponential form, is not a superscript. It's here by itself on the logarithm, so that's the exponent. Same with the natural base. Natural log of one also equals zero. So whenever you see a one, watch out. There's something interesting going on here. That's one of our special properties. You recognize this as well. Any base to the power of one equals that base itself. So turn that into logarithmic form. And it looks like this. Log base a of a equals one. What you're really looking here is, does this base of a match this base here? Yes, it does match. So if those match, what you're really doing is you're identifying what is the exponent right here. That is the value that goes here for our answer. Same with the natural logarithm of e. We know the base is e. If those, ma if those bases match, you want to look for this value right here. Again, that's our invisible exponent of 1. That's the answer. And that's really the pattern that we're looking at on this next one. Log base a of a to the power of x. Again, if those bases are the same, then you're looking at this value right here, and that is what you're left with. There's your base of e. So if the bases are the same, then again, you're looking right here for the exponent, because that is what you're left with. You're left with an exponent. These are really saying the same thing. They're just written in the reverse order. In the previous line, we started with the logarithm, and inside the logarithm, we had our exponential structure. There's the base of a to the power of x. This is the other way around. We're starting with the exponential structure. There's the base of a raised to the power of, well, in that exponent, is the logarithm, right? And so, again, you have matching bases. There's the base of a, which is from the exponential form. There's the base of a in the logarithmic form. If the bases match, then this value right here is what you're left with. Same with the natural base of e to the power of the natural logarithm. The bases are both e's, so that means you are left with this value right here. So that's why these have what looks to be the same answer, the x. We're just looking at those places in the form. So we're going to be using some of these properties here in our examples as we evaluate. Evaluate means we want a number for an answer, but we're not using a calculator. All right, so here's number eight, log base five of one. Anytime you see a one, a red flag should go off in your head because there's something special here. Yeah, log of any base of one equals zero. Why? Because that's what we're talking about. The base of any base to the power of zero equals one. So what is that exponent? That exponent is zero. So that's the property we're using. Here's number nine. Okay, so I don't have a one. We need a different property now. Log base four of 64. Now what we're going for is we're using this property right here. This is our attempt. We want the bases to be the same. We want log base a of a, meaning I want two numbers that are the same. Right now they're not the same. We have four and 64. They're obviously not the same. So the question is, can we rewrite the 64 in exponential form? We want to match the base of four. So the question is, 4 to what power would be equivalent to 64. So this is our substitution. We're taking the 64 out and we're putting in its place 4 to the power of something. What is that exponent? Well, if it was a square, 4 squared is 16, so it's not a power of 2. Is it a power of 3? Yes, it is. 4 cubed is 64. And this is what we're looking for. The base matches the other base. And so what you are left with is this value of 3. So the exponent is 3. The answer is 3. We're going to be using this trick a lot. We're trying to match those numbers. So we usually take the bigger value and convert it into the smaller value. In this case, we took the 64 and re we rewrote it with the base of 4. Here's number 10. Our function is log base 3 of x. I need a number right here. What is that number? We're, we're told what the number is. It's in another column. This is how some of your book problems are set up. They actually kind of split the problem into two parts, and then you have to take this and plug it in. It's kind of a strange way to represent the problem, I suppose, but so that you know what's going on with the book problems. This is just your first step. You just kind of take the input and set it up, and now that's what we have to evaluate. 
log base 3 of the fraction 1 over 81. Again, we're using this method. We want these numbers to be the same. So we usually take the bigger number and try to make it match the smaller number. So the question is, can I take that 81 and rewrite it in exponential form so that I have the base of 3? All right, log base 3 of 1 over. So the challenge is take the 81 out. We know that is uh, 9 squared, right? But 9 doesn't match the 3. We could take each 9 and factor it into 3 times 3. So we really have 3 to the power of 4. So that's the trick right there. We're not quite done. We're getting close. We want this format here. You want a single base, and you want a single value that is not a fraction. We have a fraction. So what we're doing is we're going to take that denominator of 3 to the 4th, we move it across the division bar, and any time you move it across the division bar, what ends up happening is you change the sign on the exponent right there. So that's what happened. That's a negative 4. So we took the base of 3, moved it into the numerator, but that means the exponent of positive 4 now becomes a negative 4. Now we have this pattern where the bases match, and so the result is negative 4. So we'll be using that a few times. Here's number 11, log base 4 of 4 to the power of 3x. Hey, those 4s already match. Excellent. So we just look right here, and that's our answer. So the answer is 3x. So we're not solving for x, we're just writing down whatever we see right there. Here's number 12, log, okay, there's no base. So we know that's a base of 10, log base 10 of 0.01. So to, because we're using this uh, property where we want to match these numbers, I'm going to put that base back in. There it is, base of 10. Well, they don't match, do they? And this is kind of strange. Uh, we're trying to take this number here and match it to the 10. So we need to reformat this decimal. Let's replace that decimal with a fraction. What if we wrote it as log base 10 of, okay, what's the fraction equivalent of 0 0.01? That's 1 one hundredth, so it's one over one hundred. There it is, so now we're going to try and match that one hundred to the ten. So log base ten of what over ten squared? But it's not quite the right format. We have to take that ten squared and move it into the numerator. So that means it's log base ten of ten to the power of negative two. Now that the bases match, we can see that our final answer here is negative 2. All right, let's look at a few more variations on this. Here's number 13, natural log of, okay, there's no base printed, but we understand that's a base of E. Hey, look, those match. So we look right here, and that's what we're left with. It's the invisible 1, so that answer is 1. All right, I want you to think about number 14. What is log of 1? All right, we know the base is 10. Log base 10 of 1, what is that? Well, anytime you see a 1, something weird is happening. We actually saw a problem similar to that here in number 8. Did you check that out? It doesn't matter what the base is. If you're taking the, the logarithm of 1, then the exponent has to be 0. That's, that's this property that we're using right here. Log of any base of 1 equals 0. So that's a 0. All right, number 15 and 16, we'll finish up with these two. So here we have a coefficient of 5 that's being multiplied to the logarithm of 1 7. You recognize that the 7s are the same, right? But we don't want that denominator. We're going to take a moment and push that 7 into the numerator. So you still have the coefficient of 5 in front. That's being multiplied to log base 7 of 7 with a negative exponent. And now those 7s match. So you look right here, that's a negative 1, that's what you're left with. Now you still have the multiplier of 5 in front, but this logarithm is equivalent to negative 1, and we finish up with multiplication, so final answer is negative 5. So number 16 is different in several ways, and so we're going to solve it slightly differently. Again, we would like these two numbers to be the same, but you have to match the base of 4, and I, I, I can't take that 2 and easily match the base of 4. It doesn't work out quite so well. So what we're going to do is convert this into an exponential. So there's the base of 4 to the power of x equal sign 2. So 4 to the power of x equal sign 2. So we just change the forms. 
So we have the base of 4 as an exponential. Again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the bases the same. We're just using exponential form instead of logarithmic form. So can I take this 4 and replace that with something that matches the base of 2? So sure, let's use 2 squared. You still have that exponent of x there. And now notice what you have is you have an equation where the bases are the same. So the property we're using, we're going back up here, is this one. This is what we're looking at because we're in exponential form. If the bases are the same, then that means the exponent on the left must equal the exponent on the right. That's what this says. So my bases are the same. So the exponent on the left is the 2x. And the exponent on the right is, that's the invisible 1. So we have this little mini equation to solve for the missing exponent. So 2x equals 1 divided by the 2. So that means 1 half is the answer. So log base 4 of 2 equals 1 half.